Hey everybody, so welcome back to Jim Bob's Garden. So today what we're going to do is we're going to do some planting. Now I planted some seeds here uh, about two weeks ago, I think it was. Thereabouts. And man, all of them have sprouted up looking good. So it's time to get them in the ground. And also we got a lot of rain coming. And in fact it rained, um, I don't know, an inch or so, or, or so over the last couple days. So the, the soil is fairly damp. Though it was very dry to start with, so it's, it's just now starting to really soak in. So hopefully over these next two days, it'll really soak in deep. So the plan is to get as many of these out today as I possibly can. So down here, those are some sweet potato slips that I actually bought at uh, a local Walmart. Just because I hadn't really saved any sweet potatoes, didn't really have anything good um, to make slips out of. So we're going to go with those. Um, but you know, there's at least six plants there, probably closer to eight or ten, so they were less than a dollar a piece. Over here we have some Seminole pumpkins. Seminole pumpkins are going to go out. I'm going to put those in a lot of the food forest areas as well, so they'll hopefully spread and we'll get a nice pumpkin crop. And either way, it'll cover the soil, which is critical this time of year. Down there we got some roselle. All right, those plants are looking good. They're going to go in as well. Roselle makes an excellent tea. Here I got a Malabar spinach where I think, if you look back at the, the video I did when I was uh, planting these seeds, I think every seed sprouted, or very close to. All right, so then we also got some tomatoes back here. Now most of these are homegrown tomatoes from seeds that I kept, um, with the exception, like the tulip tomato there, we actually got a, um, what did we get? oh no, I, I, I bought seeds. I'm sorry, I got seeds for my birthday or Christmas, one of the two. And then back over here, we have some German Queen, which if you can get a hold of some German Queen seeds, they are a very nice tomato. It goes very well um, and very delicious. Really nice tomato to eat. All right, so that's going to be the plan for today. But a lot of what I'm going to do today is going to be an attempt to get ground cover. The Malabar spinach will spread the, and, and provide a lot of ground cover as well as the edible leaves. The sweet potato slips will spread, cover the ground very well. In fact, some, sometimes too well. So I gotta be careful where I put those. But those will also cover the ground, shade the ground, keep it moist, as well as provide edible leaves. Sweet potato leaves are eminently edible and very delicious. All right, the roselle, not so much of a ground cover, but I can use those because they're a very tall plant to provide shade. Tomatoes, again, um, are the same way. They're, they're a tall plant. They don't provide a lot of uh, ground cover because you really don't want them growing along the ground because your tomatoes will rot. Uh, but they will provide some shade where I can plant some stuff behind them and hopefully help to shade those plants. All right, and I think that's about it. That's, I think I talked about the Malabar spinach. That's another one that will spread and hopefully be some ground cover. Though it doesn't spread quite as much until much later on in the year. All right, that being said, let's get to work. Okay, first, uh, we're going to go with the uh, tomatoes. Now, one of the things I like to do with tomatoes is I like to go ahead and um, lay out my, uh, my tomato cages. So by putting the tomato cages out, I get an idea of the spacing I want, where I want them at. What's a good spacing for tomatoes? Well, I mean, that's kind of dependent on the variety and such. But usually a couple feet apart because they will get big. They will get big, depending on the soil and so on. Now this is not the best soil. But one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and I'm going to stir up the soil and I'm going to knock down some of these weeds after the fact. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put a lot of compost. My intention is going to be to fill this bed to the top with compost as a good solid layer that will keep those... Uh, tomatoes moist it'll help keep the soil moist and it'll also um, shade the soil somewhat and then after that we'll come through and we'll do a nice layer of, um, of mulch all right I'm gonna let me show you something about the mulch so here are some sweet banana peppers that I grew in um, well I bought you can see the little sticker right there I bought a six pack and these were two extras because I just didn't have the space where I wanted to put them. So I went ahead and, and threw these in here. Now, there is some difference in the soil, but this soil has a lot of compost in it. 
you can see if you look closely there's a lot of the charcoal that I mixed in with my compost so you can tell it's been composted pretty well the soil is nice and moist but those are not that tall they're maybe a foot and a half tall okay that one's even shorter and you'll notice there are no peppers now let's go over here where I've actually mulched now if you look over here you'll see the same peppers that is, this, that's those sweet banana peppers they're about a, uh, at least six inches to a foot taller and you can look and see there are a ton of peppers on the plant matter of fact I need to get out here and harvest man those will be some nice sweet juicy peppers okay and why is that because of that layer of mulch that I put down has kept them moist where the other ones it was a much bigger struggle to keep them moist okay, and then one of the things I'm doing here as well you can see my beans I'm trying to grow them down strings here and if I can get that going what that should do is help to shade those plants when the summertime heat really gets hard okay so uh, this is one of my food forest areas which I'm in the process of finishing weeding last year we allowed the Biden's Alba you'll see the all the weeds there that have got the the white flowers they're very pretty white flowers these are an excellent uh, compost plant they also have medicinal use it's called Biden's Alba or Spanish needle um, various other names for it but one of the issues has been that I let it just go crazy and so it's reseeded and come up everywhere so I'm in the process of clearing that out though I probably won't have time to do that this week um, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna plant some stuff in here all right so we're up underneath this olive tree which for the first year I'm actually growing olives which is fantastic and I'm gonna take these Seminole pumpkins you can see there's a lot of nice roots there they're just begging to get into the ground and we're gonna bury them down in here now why under this tree well one I want to cover the soil better and try and keep those shaded at least partially um, they are native to, to here in Florida thus the name Seminole pumpkin and we've had good luck in the past and I got to say, I was really concerned because when I uh, planted these seeds, um, they were old. And yet, here they are, doing well and looking really good. So we'll see if they continue to grow. Um, but we've had good luck in the past. I'm running a little bit behind. I might have could have had these in the ground a while back, but unfortunately that did not happen. So we're going to plant a couple of these in here in various spots and then we'll get back to some of the other stuff. Now I've worked a lot on this soil here. Um, this soil in particular has seen, I want to say three or four loads now of wood chips. Now those wood chips have rotted down to nice loamy soil. Now it's still a bit dry at the moment. All right, I'm not hoping that this soaking rain that we've got coming because right, we've got two more days of rain at a minimum once we get that it should hopefully soak this soil down very thoroughly and really help out but if you go down deep like just to that level right there I've already got soil that's almost moist enough to clump up and that's plenty for Seminole pumpkins like I said Seminole pumpkins are used to the weather here they're used to the seasons here in the uh, Florida area so they'll grow just fine as long as they can get started, which I've got an admirable start on these particular pumpkins. And I've been very pleased with how quickly they sprouted and grew. All right, so now let's talk about some other stuff. Now this area here gets quite a bit more shade. I did have, I put one seminal pumpkin over here and I will train it to go out into the sun. But I'm gonna put some Malabar spinach in here uh, I have grown it very successfully in a pot in my uh, covered patio. Now the area where I grew it in the covered patio got shade for over half of the day. It basically got more in the sun 
just a little bit of afternoon probably up to about one maybe um, it would still get a little bit of sun and, and then even that was filtered by the screen so I'm thinking over here up underneath this apple tree should be a great place to go ahead and plant some of this Malabar spinach now I've had mixed results putting this out in the, in the yard it, for some reason it has always seemed to do a lot better in a pot for me which doesn't make a lot of sense um, because the original cutting I got my daughter found while out um, running believe it or not and she uh, grabbed a hold of that brought it back to me I rooted it out and voila we had Malabar spinach and, and we've had it ever since it is an excellent spinach but it's kind of oh hello how you doing mr. kitty if you've been watching our videos there was a video last year where this cat showed up just really complaining and whining ah no 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 ow, ow, ow. don't kill the plants um and somehow or other she's now ours all right she's a good cat though. she really is other than the desire to crush my plants all right so i'm gonna go ahead and put some more of these in the garden and then we'll get back to the rest of them all right so out here this is some very sandy soil all right now it's not the best for growing tomatoes or what have you though if you look closely you can see that the top layer is a lot of compost you can see that by all the eggshells that's in it all this white here is eggshells we compost all of our eggshells so what i'm going to do and, and one of the other issues is it really doesn't get a huge amount of water there's only one sprinkler that really hits it um, so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put some of these um, sweet potato slips in here I did this last year and they seem to do pretty well though we did it very late um, so not as well as it could have been All right. and you can see these sweet potato slips de uh, desperately need to get into the ground very soon now I am going to put a row of tomatoes in the middle so we're going to kind of gap these out and then what I'll do is I'll allow them to kind of go up on the uh, trailer. This is an old swing, um, that was a, like a yard swing. Um, so I'll let them go up on that. And I'm gonna put a lot of these over at the edges. Let's see, can you see? Like over here, so I can direct them to go up. along the um, swing itself now we'll go back and compost these but I'll be honest with you it's really not that big a deal all right sweet potatoes another uh, native crop I believe they're native or if not they're very well climatized but they are an incredible grower they will take harsh conditions they don't mind the humidity and the heat and in fact you only see them this time of year because this is the time of year that they really love. All right, so we're going to put some of these. We'll put one right here. This is some very sandy soil. Now, I will come back through and put some compost on it after I get the rain and all. Or maybe before, if I can squeeze it in before the rain hits. It's supposed to rain all week this week. So we want to go ahead and allow that to happen well I mean not like we can stop it but, but I want to try and get as much of this in as possible so that nice rain because rain is so much better than city water when it comes to watering obviously it has no chlorine but it also doesn't have all the calcium and such that you get you know the hard water deposits that you get from city water because it's drawn up from the aquifer underneath the ground all right so these will do another dual function not only well actually triple function not only will they hopefully grow sweet potatoes for us but they will also shade the soil and provide us with a source of uh, summertime leaves to eat in our salads all right so let me get these done and we'll get back to you again <sighs> so now this is an area that I have yet to weed um, one of my food forest areas 
So the theory at least is that I shouldn't have to weed it all the time. But once again, last year we kind of let everything go to hell. So things got carried away. But we're gonna we're gonna get back. We're working on it. But in the meantime, so what we have is Roselle. Now Roselle gets to be a very tall plant. Um, some people call it the uh, southern cranberry because there's a way to, which we haven't done yet, but we're going to this year, there's a way to take Roselle and turn it into basically um, imitation cranberry sauce. All right. Uh, I will tell you that the wife dried some last year and used it for teas, and oh, she really loved it. And I got to admit, I'm not really into tea, but that was pretty good. All right. I got to say, I was very impressed with the flavor of that cranberry. Now, once again, this is an area that has had a ton of wood chips put on it. I mean, like four or five different times it's had wood chips, and we're going to do that again this year. I have a stack that I'm going to start putting on, and here in the Jacksonville area, um, it's actually changed. It used to be you could call the city, but now you got to call JEA. Um, and I'll do a video on that probably the next time I get wood chips. But wood chips rot down into this really nice dark um, soil. It, it really just is, is very nice to have. All right, highly recommend it. And now it takes time to build. It's not something you can do that you're going to get the benefit out of right away, though it does work as an excellent mulch. Um, it's just a lot better if you got the time to let it sit and rot down. There's one reason I haven't gotten too big a hurry um, as far as getting those wood chips out. Now, Roselle gets to be, I don't know, three, four foot tall. They get pretty tall, depending on the soil you have and all that. All right, and they're a big plant. So you want to keep that in mind when you're planting it. Um, they seem to like pretty much any kind of soil. Um, I put these in my worst soil la uh, a couple years ago. Well, I'm sorry, three years ago. And then they came back the next year. They did very well. Then came back the next year and just kept on going. So they don't seem to mind. I do believe they're a native. If not, they're very well adapted here in the Florida area, at least North Florida. And they're really pretty. They come up, they've got a really nice red flower. Once we get them growing, I'll go ahead and show you that and how to get um, some tea from them and so on. So we're gonna plant several of these here. All right, and then we'll see where we're at with the rest of our planting for the day. So like I said, I really wanna get as much of this done today as possible. All right, and then the tomatoes, we're just gonna slap them in real quick. Now you don't have to have the tomato cage here when you plant them. Ah! What was that? I do like to have a tag wherever possible. And then because tomatoes like lots of moisture, if you have the ability, it's not a bad idea to go ahead and leave a little bit of a well so that you know it's going to drain down into, the, into the, the base roots of the tomato, which really aren't that big. They aren't as big as you'd think. They don't spread as much as, um, like I said, you would think. All right. So we're going to go ahead and leave those there. And I'm going to go in because I'm hungry. So that's what I got going on today. So far, we've planted Roselle. We've planted Malabar spinach. planted tomatoes. we planted... Um, um, sweet potatoes and um, is that it? yeah I think that's it so far today hopefully we got it all in or we'll get it all in before the rain comes but if not then we can always come back and work on it the next day alright thanks for stopping by do me a favor give me a like and a subscribe and let me know what you think but most importantly grow something get something growing in your yard you'll thank yourself later alright thanks for stopping by